were talking to Budke a little bit earlier about the 2019 start, 2021 guard, 2022 start, each 0 and 2, and he said the leadership in 19 and 21 were the big differences in how the rest of the season played out. He feels like this year, 22 is closer to what 19 was. Is that something that you would you would follow with? I hope so. I mean, I really truly do hope that you know the 19 and. 2022 leadership is is, is similar, and uh, which I think right now I feel like it is similar um, compared to the 2021 season, and just some of the things that we had happen going on in our team at that time. And hopefully these kids, you know, taking ownership, you know, and and fixing the problems that need to be fixed. And uh, you know, as a coach, you can only do so much, and you can only tell them so many different things, and you can only tell kids to do things this way, and or you know, we'll focus on the little things, but. A lot of times it needs to come from your fellow teammates, and when it comes from your fellow teammates, it means a little bit more. And uh, I know that's hard for kids these days to, to have confrontation with others because, you know, we want to be best friends and you know, we want everybody to like us and, and, and all those things. But what I try to tell them is if you are a best friend, you know, you're going to make sure that people do the right things. And I, I hope my best friends hold me accountable as well. And. Uh, so I, I do feel like they, it's getting there. It's just still a process. I'm still trying to teach them. I'm still trying to grow them. I'm still trying to make them great young men and and learn how how life truly works. And uh, but yes, I think the leadership is better um, than it was in 2021. But uh, you know, I still think it's still a work in progress. And I think we'll, we'll finally get there. When leadership starts to lack a little bit, does it happen gradually or is it a sudden drop off? I mean, I, I don't think our leadership has really been. I can, it's just there's no vocal leadership. I mean, we have a lot of guys that lead by example and do things the right way. It's just when it comes to actually, con you know, having a confrontation with somebody about doing things the right way or making a kid do things the right way, if they're cutting corners, not get on to them. I think that's the hardest part for a kid right now to, to understand. But uh, I don't think there's a lack. It's just the vocal part is what we're lacking not the physical part and then doing your job and then all those things. It truly, truly is just the, the vocal part of it. That, that's the lacking part of it right now. That's probably what's most, what most of society today in itself. What did the win mean? And I know it's Lincoln and not, and not to, you know, downplay them, but obviously they're not Northwest or some of the other teams in the conference. What did the win mean? And did you still see the improvement even though the opponent was of the three teams, that, you know, not like the first two, do you still see what you had hoped to see in that victory? Not in the first quarter. You know, I really did. In the first quarter, I did not see anything. I mean, I was like, okay, who are we as a football team right now and how are we going to grow and how are we going to mature and, and fix this? And then, you know, we got better in the second quarter. Of course, the second half was, was more of what we were expecting. Um, we should have played like that the entire game. But, you know, hopefully our kids have learned that, you know, we have to come out fast. You know, I still feel like we are a hesitant football team when we step onto the field and just, you know, want to fill things out to see, okay, how hard is this team going to play? And are they a physical football team? Are they not? Instead of us just playing from the get-go. But, you know, I did see some really good things out of some young men. Um, I feel like some of the young offensive linemen that got in there and got to play did an excellent, excellent job. And they're only going to grow and mature. You know, as they go through our program, I thought, you know, Ethan Forrester came in and did an excellent job with the, his route, you know, the, the things that we gave him to do, and he ran physical as well. Um, even some of the secondary guys and some of the defensive guys, you know, they came in and, and made some plays. You can still tell they were still kind of hesitant, and they weren't great tacklers because they haven't really got to tackle a lot. But I did see some improvement, and I did see some guys that, you know, looking towards the future here um, that are going to help us, you know, out, and uh, maybe not this year. You know, they'll have to play a little bit this year, but if they're in, in spot situations, but the future for next year is bright as well. You mentioned the slow starts, and I'm sure obviously you, you've addressed them with the team. And how, how does that change? I mean, you said it's been like three weeks in a row now that's been been a problem. I don't know. You know, we start practice with just our normal, you know, bathroom kind of do a little quick walk through, just like a normal warm up for pre, you know, pre game, and uh, you know, go through our stretch, stretching, and, and do all these different things to get our kids ready. Then we go right into a situational practice with you know, one offense versus one defense and two offense versus two defense and it might be a blitz day, it might be a third down day, uh, a red zone day. And so we try to start a practice fast with some competition and get these kids playing fast right away. And then we go into some special teams and things like that. You know, I'm just sitting there, I don't know, how, how do we get these guys to lock in a little bit quicker and play a little bit harder, a little bit faster, sooner? 
and sometimes it just comes down to them. I mean, I can only give so much energy. Like I'm 48 years old now. I mean, there's only so much energy you have in there. But you know, I try to bring some juice and try to bring some energy and try to bring some excitement to them. You know, during pregame. You know, before we come out for the game. And uh, but it seems like once it's time for that first whistle and it's time to kick off, our guys just kind of I'm not gonna say panic, but just kind of relax a little bit and say, okay, let's just see how this is going to play out instead of just playing football and getting after it like we have in the past. And you know, you look at that 2017 season, those guys came out and played fast and hard and ready from the start. 2018, we kind of had that same, we had an 0-2 start, we still had some really tough games and we played really hard. Um, but the script's just got to figure it out that we just can't sit back and relax. I don't know what we have to do to get it done. Um, energy drinks, I don't know what else, something <laughs> just to kind of get that energy flow a little bit quicker, playing a little bit faster, and just quit sitting back and hesitating and being timid. Let's just go start playing Tiger football. As of Tuesday afternoon, who are you looking at being the starter quarterback this week? Well, right now we're still going to stay with Jack, um, just, just looking at it, right, because we haven't had really a good chance to see Chance actually get on the field yet. Um, we did do some running yesterday, and he looked okay, and he looked fine. Um, but that's just straight line running, and, and that was it. Um, so today will be a test with him. You know, we'll see him in some individual drills. We'll do, do a few, you know, probably skelly drills as well. But as of right now, we're thinking Jack, and just until we see Chance fully, to make sure that he's fully recovered. I don't want to take an opportunity where he's just, you know, three quarters or, or halfway there, and then he's out there and re re injure that knee again, and now it's another two or three weeks, you know, of him sitting out. So. We gotta make sure that we feel confident that he's able to scramble and able to get himself out of trouble. And if we don't feel like like he can do that, then we're gonna go with Jack. What's your evaluation of Jack uh, in uh, his second week as the starter? He did well. I mean, there's still a few things here that he still gotta work on a little bit. You know, sometimes he tries to extend the play too much instead of just throwing the ball away. You know, that's where we had our first fumble down there that we almost lost. That Strider got. We just got three points on. Um, Maybe get his reach a little bit quicker, you know, but some things I did see was, you know, his scramble for a touchdown was very impressive. I mean, he got out of the open. I thought he was just going to run out of bounds. Kid has no fear. You know, he, he was going to go score a touchdown. He actually scored two rushing touchdowns, you know, in that game. And, you know, his, his first one was on the goal line. I mean, he, he got popped pretty hard, bounced right back up and, and ready to go again. The, I think his leadership's great out there. Um, it's just sometimes it's, you know, the throws here and there are a little bit, too lackadaisical. Sometimes I think he needs to put a little bit more zip on him um, than what he's doing. But overall, you know, I, I still think he's a really good quarterback. I think he's still learning, but I still I, I do think he is comfortable, you know, in those situations. And I don't think anything really stresses him out. I think he loves being out there. I think he enjoys it. I think he likes being the guy and having that pressure. And uh, you know, Chance was the same way when he was young. He wanted to be that guy too. So, but I think his improvement from week one to week two was, was still there's improvement. And uh, you know we'll see from week you know two to three here how he improves from that. With all of the injuries that your team has suffered through the first three weeks, and then you've also got you mentioned some of the younger guys on the offensive line played really well. How many positions are open for potential change right now? There's quite a few. You know we have you know Devin White is, is back this week. You know which is going to be good, but it's going to be limited in practice. You know so there's still some competition at that position. Um, John Johnson will be back, um, but it's still, again, a limited practice um, to see what he can handle. Um, Pat Kelly will be back as well, but it's still, you know, limited on what he's going to do in practice and, and how much he's able to be able to play, you know, in, in the game. But with, with all these guys, it's all probably going to be limited. Um, Trevor Watts will be back, but again, limited in practice. And how's he progressed to practice and can we keep him healthy? So all those positions to me are still open. I think every week, to me, let's let's go put our best guys out there who's competed the best, best in practice and you know who knows their plays. And that's the number one thing is guys knowing their plays, knowing the situation, and and finding guys that are just true football players, and not just a, a wide receiver or a tight end or, or a linebacker. I want true football players that play the game right, play it physical, play it aggressive, and know what they're doing, and guys that want to go make plays, um, not guys that sit back and, and look for somebody else to make plays. I want to find the guys. You know, this week in practice, I want to go out and make the plays to help us win ball games. So a lot of those guys might be freshmen, right? Because they're hungry and they want to get on the field. And, and, and if that is it, that's it. We'll go with those guys. Missouri Southern two and one, and you know the game they lost to Cardi was a, a tight battle. 
Uh, just your thoughts on them. They appear to be a lot better and playing really, really hard and really well. They're good. I mean, they really are a very good football team. Um, they got their great across the defensive line. I mean, they are very active, very quick, um, got good hands. Um, they twist very well. Um, do a good job of containing quarterbacks and keeping them in the pocket. And their offensive line's a bunch of I mean, they're big guys. We're talking 300 pounders across the board, except for maybe their center. But he's a tough guy and, and makes a lot of plays. And, you know, and then they move people. Um, quarterback's a young kid that's got a lot of starts as a freshman and is playing with a lot of confidence right now. And, you know, throws a lot of short routes and gets to get the ball out of his hands quick, but he can throw a very nice deep ball as well. And their running backs run hard. And their tight ends play hard as well. And then, you know, again, on the defensive side, we talked about their D-line already, but their linebackers, I mean, they're just, they don't get out of position. And uh, when you don't get guys out of position, even when you try to move guys to get them out of position and they still don't bite on it, and that's hard for an offense. You know, corners play tough. Um, number seven is probably one of the most physical corners I've ever seen, you know, in our conference in a long time because he loves to come up and hit. And their safeties do a good job of keeping everything in front. I mean, they don't let anything get behind them. So defensively, they're going to make you earn everything that you, that you get. And are we patient enough, you know, at every position on offense just to take what they give us? And, uh, you know, if we can do that, we're going to be okay. But... You know, they are much improved. Coach T. Bradley has done an amazing job of getting you know those guys ready and, and playing hard. And you know that's one thing about them that they do play hard and they play physical. You know, you talk about needing to be patient, you know, like offensively. What are the, the keys for you offensively and defensively that you've seen on film against them? Is there anything that you feel like without giving away the game plan, obviously? But is there anything that you want to think you need to address? Well, hopefully, I mean, in offense, I really hope we can get our run game going. I mean, we kind of started last week, you know, but it's still not nearly where we need it to be. And I think that's the whole key to our offense. If we can get our run game going, there's going to be a lot of things that open up because, you know, I was a secondary guy myself. You know, they keep running the ball. Well, eventually, I'm going to I want to help, to, you know, stop the run somehow, some way. And then hopefully we can take our shots off of that. And then, you know, the pass game. You know, don't get greedy and try to put a ball somewhere where we don't need to, all right? You know you got two high safeties. Um, they're, they're not going to bite. They're going to stay high. And uh, don't force a ball when you don't need to force a ball deep. And uh, if they do give you one, take advantage of it. Take the opportunity. But, you know, don't put ourselves in the hole by trying to rush things and, and beat ourselves up and create and turn, you know, cause any turnover on offense. And then, you know, defensively, again, it, it's – I still feel like we got to do better in the run game because if we can't do better in the run game, then we're going to struggle, you know, you know, throughout the whole game because now it just opens up their pass game as well. So, you know, we got we got to dominate the line of scrimmages, um, which every team you see is going to say that you have to dominate the line of scrimmage. That's just not giving them a big play, uh, making them earn everything as well, you know, and uh, you know, hopefully we can create some turnovers off that by being physical. We'll circle back around to the leadership thing that you talked about at the beginning. And you talked about not just being a, a physical leader, but a, a, a vocal leader. Who are some of the best vocal leaders you've had in your time here in Hayes? I mean, Luke Wright, you know, it, it was a big one, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. Jesse Trent, you know, was a big leader, you know, vocally. Um, you know, Brock Long, Jose Delgado, you know, Connor Shadi, Dwayne Jabolu, um, Tanner Hookman, you know, those guys on the defense, they did it didn't matter. Even when they were best friends, they held each other accountable. And offensively, and I thought we really did a really good job. Um, I mean, Pat does every once in a while, you know. But quarterback-wise, you know, Jake never really said much. He just kind of did his thing. Um, but you know, but he was still a good leader because of the things he did on the field. He was wasn't so much loud. Where I'm kind of a loud guy when I want to express my feelings to the players. Jake was more calm and you know collected. And how here's how things need to be done. But uh, those are some of the guys that I can remember around right the top of my head just because they did everything right. And if you missed weights, you knew about it, you know, from those guys. If you didn't do a set or a rep, they knew about it. If you were lazy in practice, they let you know about it. And uh, those are some of them. Then, you know, Travis Talley, you know, his senior year really stepped up. You know, offensively was a great leader for us, too. And Matt Herbert was another one of those guys that, that didn't really put up with a lot and made sure guys think we're doing things the right way. So those that's what we're looking for, you know, just those guys that – aren't afraid to speak their mind and let their let their teammates know that hey this isn't how we do it here and uh, but I think just 
I don't know if it's still the 2020 COVID that got us all and, and, and made us this way. This uh, We're kind of reserved and, and we don't want to say much about anything or just the way the world's kind of grown these young men now. Is, is that, so it's my job as a coach to kind of hopefully change that and get them more vocal and get them more involved and you know help change things you know on our team and hopefully eventually I'll help them in their life as, that, as they're growing up and, and change the world a little bit. With this weekend being family weekend, is there added pressure having you know families or anyone attending the game that isn't familiar with this team? I think it's just I think it should be exciting, right? If your family comes, you got you got them in the stands. People are getting to watch you finally, you know. Um, other people, you know, other students here with their families as well coming in. I think it's I think it's an exciting time. I don't know why we'd ever get nervous about playing, you know, in front of people. To me, that's exciting. Now, maybe if I was coaching in front of 200,000 people, like some of these big schools, maybe I'll get a little nervous. But you know, to me, that's cool. You know, that's to me that's. You feed off that energy. You feed off that excitement. So, I don't think that should hurt us. I think it should be one of those things that, you know, gives us more energy, gives us more excitement. You know, gives us a little more sense of urgency. And I'm hoping that's what that happens. That that's what that does this week for us. How much of, in your coaching philosophy, how much of it is player management, player relations, getting them buying in, and also part of that. How do you talk to your team member of that? Open to start? Do you, you know, now you're one and two. Do you say, okay, we get back to 500, or uh, then we go on from there? How do you approach that entire uh, philosophy? You know, we're sitting there, two, you know, it's talking about, you know, we just played two really good football teams. And I'm standing right here in front of a very good football team as well. It's just that we haven't put all the pieces to the puzzle together yet. And we haven't played up to our potential yet. And, I said, you know, I told him, I said, I know we're a very talented football team. It's just you guys laying it on the line and, and showing your skills, you know, every single day in practice. So that happens on Saturday. And, you know, that's kind of, you know, when you lose, lose in those games and they're, they're games that you had a chance and opportunity to win, you still got to be positive. Um, against Lincoln, I was, uh, you know, I was happy that we won the game, but I still thought our performance was not very well. And so, Maybe you're a little bit harder on it then in those situations about still doing the little things right and you know look at how you performed you know on Saturday and, and, and did you ever, did you do everything possible to help us win that game or did you hurt us in certain situations and uh, you know there's just different things it's just, but it is about the relationship with the young men you know it's about making sure that you know that they know that you do care about them that you do love them and that you know even though you're hard on them um, that doesn't mean you, that that takes away my love and my care for. Because to me, a coach that coaches them hard and cares about them and wants to do well and wants them to be successful is someone that truly cares about them. And I'm not going to put them through the woodwork and beat them and, you know, and, and you know, grind and pound them in practice and, and, and wear them out to make them better because I, I want them to be healthy on Saturday. But we're going to step on the field. We're going to make sure that we are really focusing on the little things that, that's going to make this team better. How many more interceptions does Hunter need to match that? <laughs> I don't even know how many he has. I think he's got three total now. So he needs eight, eight more. All right. It's a crazy I have number 11, and he needs 11. All right. I was number 11, and I got 11. Um, but you know, kids these days, they go for the interception. And back in my day, we went for the hit. You know? So, but all that, that whole game's kind of gone away now with the targeting and all that stuff, the defenseless player. But no, I'm proud of him. He, he's done a great job. You know, he's really worked himself into a good position. But you know, he's got eight more to go. So. He's got at least, you know, guaranteed eight more games. So if he can get one a game, maybe two, he might get there. Did he, did he get the ball? Uh, no, we don't, nah, he didn't get the ball. We don't give those balls out. Those things are too expensive. We've got to make sure that we get those back. So, but no, if a kid does break a record or something like that, we'll make sure that we save those balls, you know, for them if they do break a record, you know, during the game or something, that they have that ball you know, once their times are done here. And sometimes at the end of a career, we'll, we'll get a ball with all the things that they've done. You know, especially if they're all conference, all American kids, just to kind of give them something for their kids to, you know, eventually see and, and just some memorabilia for them as they're done here.